Hello, my name is Nelson Schumann, and I'm the founder and president of Restored to Freedom, which is a ministry that works with people around the world to help them get set free from any enemy tormenting spirits that have been affecting them, causing them not to uh, live a life in peace and to walk in their authority. And uh, today, the topic we're going to talk about is the number one reason for strife in marriages, as well as the number one reason for divorce. Um, the Lord uh, has taken me through some uh, very interesting circumstances in my life in order to come into the ministry that he has called me into right now, and that is helping people who have had uh, marriages that have been extremely strife-filled, as well as those that have gone through uh, multiple divorces or one or t you know one divorce in their life, and they're looking to get remarried. So. What I have uh, observed, what I've seen in my own ministry, I've, I've been doing this now, I've, I've, I've dealt with uh, well over uh, several thousands of uh, people individually on individual sessions, and I'm actually doing a lot more of these uh, worldwide deliverance sessions uh, where we can get thousands at a time set free using uh, Facebook Live, using TV and YouTube and so forth. So here's what the Lord's shown me, is that those people who have grown up with wounds from their fathers and or mothers. Um, you know, th and it could be the wound was that they simply did not have a father involved in their life. Or their father might have been you know, very controlling and you couldn't do anything to earn the love. Um, and or you had a mother that was really, really controlling and uh, treated you really, really badly and you, you really got hurt because they didn't love you unconditionally the way that the Lord you know, wants them to. So what happens is to that child when they start to grow up is they start to hear the enemy's voice whisper to them and commingle with their thoughts. So many kids, of course, that are growing up in these more toxic homes that are void of love and compassion, they don't realize what's going on spiritually to them. But the enemy, of course, likes to whisper to us in our thoughts and our minds because we get thoughts from one of three different places. We get thoughts from ourselves, which most people think those are all our thoughts. Uh, but there's also two other places. There's thoughts that we get from you know, the Holy Spirit and the Lord, but then also the, the enemy. You know, the enemy is very, very strong at uh, whispering to us, and we have no clue. Um, in fact, my mentor had indicated to me, you know, Nelson, there's going to be a, come a, a time where you're going to be learning this. And when I first started learning about this whole process, and he said that, if you're not at peace, if there's ever time you're not at peace, it's always the enemy that's behind that. You know, if you're anxious, if you're fearful, if you are angry, you know, there's an enemy component that's whispering to you, causing you to get into fear, causing you to get into anger or worry, um, which I didn't believe at the time. Didn't, didn't seem like that was possible, but as I've progressed through my, my own ministry and working with, you know, thousands of people around the world, it's the same story, and, and it's exactly spot on, exactly right, that those um, that are being afflicted by the enemy are not going to be at peace. They're going to be angry. They're going to have all kinds of uh, different situations that they cannot deal with. So, well, so what happens is the child, when they're growing up, you know, they hear voices inside their head saying that your dad doesn't love you, your mom doesn't love you, you know, they weren't there for you, um, they wish you didn't even come into this world. I mean, some horrible things that the enemy will whisper to a child as they're growing up. And uh, we're, we're all not exempt from this. Everyone hears the voice uh, you know, of the enemy at some point in their life, often, oftentimes a lot, you know, much more prevalent than what you would think. And so anyway, as the child progresses through their life, you know, if they're getting hurt from, from their parents at home or from one parent, you know, and oftentimes you'll have one parent that is like very controlling, very demanding, could be the male, could be the, you know, the female, could be the wife or the husband. And then they're normally married to someone that doesn't want to confront, that is more easy to be controlled. And so what happens is the uh, child in that toxic environment is growing up and you know, learning that, okay, I'm going to get yelled at if I don't do what they want. You know, I'm going to uh, you know, have to walk on eggshells maybe. They have to do exactly what the uh, mother or father is telling them, that, them to do. But if it's not out of love, then the enemy is going to be whispering to them, saying your daddy doesn't love you, doesn't want you, your mommy doesn't want you. And as they get older, they uh, 
essentially keep hearing that voice of the enemy. It becomes a very familiar voice, like a familiar spirit to them. Um, oftentimes it it's makes itself appear like it's their friend and they're used to hearing that voice, thinking that it's their own, but it's not. So what happens when they start to date? You know, when they're dating, what they're basically doing un unaware, you know, subconsciously, if they're being hurt a lot, is they're looking for someone that, that is safer for them to speak to that's not going to dominate them. You know, they are looking for someone, essentially, that they can take out some of their pain on. You know, they want to control. And so they're looking for someone that is a little, you know, weaker on the demands of their life because that's all they've known. That's all they've been around. So essentially what happens is they get older, they end up dating, they end up getting married, you know, essentially to someone that's, you know, oftentimes that can be very, very uh, sweet, very loving, very giving type of person. And, and then the person that's been hurt by the, you know, the most by their mom or dad ends up becoming more of a taker, more of a demander. They want their way um, and they will confront until they get their way. They will wear you down. And so ultimately, they, those, those people come together, they get married, and then it sets them up for a lot of strife in marriage. Because the one person that is being hit, you know, the strongest, you know, is getting, hearing these messages from them saying, you know, don't let them do this, or control them this way, or do this. You know, they're sitting there watching TV, they're, they're wasting time, you know, get on them, get on them, get on them constantly. And then they have children, and then that person that's more the controlling person gets on the children and starts to wear the children out. This is a very common scenario I'm talking about all over the world. And uh, what happens is that it ends up causing such you know, strife and friction in the family, especially in the marriage, that it starts to break down. You know, they end up going to counseling, we'll say. Sometimes they do if they have enough money to do it. And then the counselors are well-meaning, and they try and just tell you basically, don't do this, do this, don't do that, try this. And uh, unfortunately, it's a spiritual component. It's not a behavior issue. Yes, the behavior is bad, mm -hmm. but the root of it is the spirit, the enemy spirit. And what is that enemy spirit that I'm talking about? What, uh, if you were to give it a name? Well, the Lord revealed to me that uh, there are basically two spirits that are behind the most strife on an individual that causes the strife in the marriage. And the uh, first one is called the spirit of Jezebel. It's very controlling, very manipulative. They want their way constantly. It's very deceiving. They'll lie. Um, there's a sexual component that is not healthy. It's very selfish. And uh, there's uh, just a, they, they, they rise up. If they don't get their way, they become stronger with their uh, yelling and raising their voice and demanding that you give them what they want. Because if you don't, then your life will be hell until they get their way. And uh, it's so toxic on a marriage. It's the number one reason why people strive. The number one reason why there's divorce today is because of Jezebel. And then Jezebel has a partner that uh, always, I've seen it you know, with the thousands of people I've worked with around the world, that come with it. And now you think about um, you know, Jezebel in the Bible. Um, for those of you watching, you know, I assume that most of you, you know, have gone to church. There may be some that have not. You know, it's in 1 Kings, you know, chapter 16, 19, 20, all the way into 2 Kings, uh, where it talks about Jezebel uh, being married to Ahab, King Ahab. You know, Jezebel uh, was, uh, you know, worshipped Baal, and they had a lot of Baal prophets that she promoted, and she tried to kill the Christian, um, you know, the, the Lord's, essentially, um, prophets. And uh, she did a good job of trying to wipe them out. She didn't get them all. She didn't get, you know, Elijah. And there's a, a remnant that she did not kill completely. The Lord would not let that happen. But um, she basically married an Ahab, a guy that was in power, that uh, she could usurp that power and take over it and demand and get her way. She was very good at manipulating, getting her way, and, and killing people uh, that would get in her way. And then there's another spirit that's talked about in Job 41 talks about it being very formidable. It's from, this, it's from the water. It's a serpent called the spirit of Leviathan. Leviathan um, is like an alligator. It's got a long tail. Um, and uh, essentially, again, it's a spirit. Um, you know, you think about in the, the Bible where it talked about the uh, individual that had you know, a lot of demons and, 
Jesus went to cast him out. And they pleaded with him, please send us to the pigs. And Jesus said, okay, I'll send you to the pigs. Once they were sent into the pigs, and again, demons don't like to go into animals. There are de you know, demons that are in animals, but they like to inhabit humans. That's where they like to go into. But uh, in this case, they know they were going to be sent to hell. And they didn't want to go there, because what demon wants to go back to hell where it's you know, sulfur and hot and misery and void of anything good, void of God. So they basically were sent to pigs. And what happened to the pigs? The pigs ran directly into the water to the Sea of Galilee. I've actually been over there in Israel, and the guy that took us on a, on a tour showed us exactly where that place took place at. It, was, it brought it all to life. It was very interesting. This is back in 2009 when I went with the uh, Morris Cirillo uh, group. So anyway, um, these uh, spirits, you know, the spirit of Leviathan, uh, what are the, some of the characteristics if it might be tormenting you? Um, you will have a very strong, prideful spirit in you. You will be uh, more arrogant than you should be. You will think that people should serve you, give you what you want. Uh, it's a very prideful spirit, and it also twists the truth in the person's mind. If you are married to someone that has this Leviathan spirit, they will change the topic multiple times within a few minutes and ultimately bring it back to you and blame you. They are masters at that, and you will be exhausted being married to someone that's like that. Again, I'm describing some behavior here that the Holy Spirit is speaking to uh, people that are watching this right now because it's truth. You know, I know it personally. I know of others that have, you know, thousands of others that have seen the very same thing. You know, so when Jezebel and Leviathan are on a person, uh, it's, it's uh, pretty much a nightmare. And again, it can come into different levels. There's, there can be a subtle version of that where they're not like yelling and screaming and throwing knives and glasses. And then there's the more extreme version where they do go crazy, basically. You know, they have like a spirit of insanity that comes on them. Uh, so anyway, um, if you know that that's what I'm describing, that that's you, you know, then uh, I, I wrote a book called Restored to Freedom, The Road to, to Deliverance from the Enemy's Finest. And this is the English version. The Lord has uh, also allowed me to get it translated into Spanish. Restaurado a la Libertad. And then also into German, which is Ernert zur Freiheit. So we have uh, the Restored to Freedom book available in, in German, Spanish, and English. And this uh, is basically given to people that have the spirit of Jezebel, Leviathan, and it's getting them delivered from them. Because the, uh, the challenge between having a person that operates in that and then the person getting delivered is that they have to realize and recognize that, yes, they indeed are behaving that way. Oftentimes, they're doing it so covertly. They're doing it behind closed doors, you know, in the marriage. And oftentimes, they're in the church. You know, most times, you know, they're going to be in the church because they want to truly shut down, you know, true deliverance. They want to shut down, you know, the, even the prophetic voice. You know, and oftentimes people that have that spirit are prophetic. They can pray in tongues. I've seen it firsthand. And uh, that spirit really torments them. You know, it's really nasty when you have uh, a person that has that. I've seen a lot of pastors, pastors' wives that have that, worship leaders, assistant pastors, associate pastors, leaders. It attacks those a lot of them that, are, that want to become leaders because that spirit in them wants to control other people, wants to shut them down. So you'll see that a lot you know, in those that are in the church. And so uh, this book, Restored to Freedom, basically explains how you get that and how you get it. I talked about up front in the show, and that was through primarily father wounds, but you can get it through a mother. It's really, really controlling. And uh, it starts to whisper to them as they're growing up. And of course, then it drives them to find someone that they can control, you know, someone that's a giver. You know, they are a taker, those that have the Jezebel spirit. They want their own way. That spirit is very, it's fearful. People that have that, you know, they, they grew up, they didn't have protection, you know, from a father or mother. They were always either walking on eggshells or getting yelled at or getting hurt. And so there's a lot of fear. It's the base of that is the spirit of fear. And, uh, Again, a lot of people are like on anxiety medication and stuff that uh, operate in that spirit of Jezebel and, and Leviathan. And then the other thing that uh, Leviathan will do 
is not only give you, you know, a spirit of pride and twist the truth in your mind, but it causes a myriad of physical sicknesses and diseases in the body. And I've seen this. It literally will wrap around a person's spine and it will twist. It causes them to have back pain, neck pain. They have insomnia. They cannot sleep well at night because it wants to steal their dreams. So basically when they're trying to sleep, it will wake them up and they cannot sleep well. And so they are not going to have any dreams, any prophetic dreams that the Lord can get to them. The same thing is when they are look, looking to read like, you know, some godly books or the Bible, they will fall asleep. They cannot stay awake. It puts them to sleep. If they try to listen to the word being preached or on, uh, you know, um, TV or radio, they will fall asleep. It, it just does not let them receive what they need to receive. It wants to steal all that from them. And I've even seen people that have had fibromyalgia and cancer with Leviathan. Now the other way that you can obtain and have this Leviathan spirit have a right to come on you and start to torment you is if you ever had a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather that was ever involved in Freemasons or in Shriners. And there's some other organizations that are out there too. And the reason why is because what they do in secrecy, it's a very secret organization because the goal of that is essentially it's worshiping the enemy, Satan. Um, they, they talk about the great architect of the universe is who they worship within that organization. And it's all done behind closed doors, all very secretive. They start out slowly trying to get you involved there, saying that you'll be taken care of financially the rest of your life. And there's all, it's all driven by man, uh, mammon, which is money. It uh, drives that organization. And it's unfortunate because uh, there's a lot of uh, sickness and disease that comes on not only you know them but also down their bloodline you'll see a lot of people that are involved in that that have freemason license plates i know in the united states at least and a lot of them are parked at the handicap sections which is quite interesting well it's because of the curse of leviathan that comes on a person it has a legal right when they're ending up saying these things behind closed doors i was told that once they get to a 32nd degree mason they have to pledge their lives to satan and if anything that they have done in that organization is ever revealed, they're supposed to put a knife into their eye and to poke the eye out, basically. You know, it's very, uh, very demonic, very evil, and not healthy in any way possible. So essentially what happens is that gives the right of this cur curse of Leviathan to come down the bloodline. I know a lot of people, when they knew that they had fathers or grandfathers or great-grandfathers involved in Freemasons, is they would do a renunciation prayer to break off the various levels of things that were declared in the Freemasons group. But if they don't ever touch and talk about the Leviathan spirit, they will still not get freedom. They'll have back pain. They will have neck pain. You know, they can have blurriness of vision. There's a lot of them that go to chiropractors. You know, I used to go to a chiropractor. Why? Because I had scoliosis, Why? And which is curvature of the spine. You know, why was my spine curved? I just found this out in uh, November of 2016 that my grandfather was involved in Freemasons. I had no clue. He was a farmer. I was like, why would a farmer be involved in Freemasons? Well, it's because of the business contacts. I know that he walked with uh, very bow legs. He had pain in his back. You know, it was sad to watch. But uh, I ended up inheriting that, which is not fun. You know, I had a lot of headaches. And uh, there's a lot of chiropractors that uh, were out of Indianapolis when I worked in the healing rooms there that would refer their patients to me because they knew that it was a, a spirit that they couldn't correct. And uh, it was quite interesting um, what the Lord has shown me through all this. So, so essentially it is, it's the number one reason as far as for striving in a marriage for uh, divorce is the Jezebel and Leviathan spirit married to someone that has the Ahab spirit. You know, what is the Ahab spirit? And again, I wrote a book called Waking the Lion Within, Reclaiming Your Position in Christ. Ahab essentially causes a person to not want to confront another person. They don't like confrontation. They would rather just let things go, let the person that has Jezebel get their way, and uh, that can hopefully reduce some of the strife. Because if you ever stood up to a person that has Jezebel, they will let you know it. They will try to put you in your place. They will try and dominate you. Um, it's, inter it's interesting because I asked the Lord what percentage of women to some degree have a Jezebel spirit and how, what percentage of men. The Lord said about 60% of women and 30% of men operate in that. So if you do the math, there's about 60% of men that have the Ahab spirit, 
30% of the women that have the Ahab spirit. You know, and I've seen a lot of the Ahabs that struggle with pornography. And the reason why is because the sex that they're supposed to be getting, that's supposed to be beautiful and loving and passionate and intimate from their spouses is just not there. It's just sex. And that's exactly what uh, Jezebel's spirit does. It's, it's void of intimacy. It's demanding and it's not, not good. It's just not good. So uh, when you get rid of that spirit of Jezebel and Leviathan and Ahab, you'll feel amazing. In fact, a lot of people immediately will feel lighter, like the heaviness of those spirits are, have been lifted when they're gone. You have to take your authority, though. You have to command them to go, and you have to mean it with all of your heart. You uh, can't just say the prayers. There's nothing magic about the words, the prayers that are in the book. But those that truly mean it, that spirit leaves, and they feel amazing. And you still may have mindsets that need to be healed, which is just a process of time. Um, but at least the overall spirits, once they're gone, will not be whispering to you as loudly. You will hear the enemy at a much lower level. And then I've seen testimony after testimony of people who had so much striving and arguing in their marriages before Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab were kicked out. And then afterwards, they're like a completely different person. They have peace. Their whole countenance has changed. They feel amazing. And it's, uh, it's happening more and more now um, around the world as people become aware of this. So it's uh, just amazing transformations. And then they can also hear the Lord's voice more clearly than ever. I've had a lot of people that come into a strong prophetic gifting because now they're hearing the Lord's voice. You know, it's not uh, a voice up there in their minds that's driving them in fear. It's a loving voice, you know, from the Holy Spirit. And it's telling them what they need to do, how they need to operate in peace and in love instead of out of fear, instead of out of controlling other people. So it's, uh, it's just a phenomenal um, revelation that the Lord had uh, revealed to me. And this is back in 2015, after I'd gone through some extreme circumstances, you know, being married to someone that was being afflicted by the Jezebel and Leviathan spirits at a very extreme rate. You know, and I had compassion for that person. You know, I still have compassion for them. You know, I don't want that, uh, that person to be hurt you know, by the enemy any longer. Enough is enough. Now it's time to get delivered. So anyway, as I'm speaking, you should have the Holy Spirit speaking to you if you're operating in any of these spirits. And uh, it's time to get delivered. When you get delivered, you'll feel amazing. And when you feel peace for the first time, you won't be striving. You won't be uh, arguing with your spouse. You know, what does it say in 2 Timothy 2, 23, 24? It says, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, must not strive, but be gentle in all their ways. So if you're being hit by the enemy, you're hearing the thoughts come in, and it's driving you to control, to manipulate, to dominate your spouse, then you're getting hit by the enemy, and that's the spirit of Jezebel and the spirit of Leviathan. So again, I've got the prayers in Restored to Freedom. And again, I have the Spanish version and I have the German version available. So uh, you can get them on Amazon, either in paperback form, or you can get them as a download onto your Kindle. And uh, again, you can get the books like overnight if you want, or you can get them the, in two days. Um, depends on how badly that you want to be set free, but um, I'm seeing phenomenal results. Um, you can go out to my website, which is restoredtofreedom.com. You can also go out to my Facebook ministry page, Restored to Freedom, and you can read about the testimonies of people that have gotten set free, how amazing their lives have been, how changed that they've been. Um, it's phenomenal uh, once they get set freed from those spirits. So again, the number one reason for strife and for divorce, you know, strife in a marriage and divorce, is the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Leviathan, because it wants to control the other person. You know, how many marriages do you know that are being wrecked by a person that controls the other? And unfortunately, what happens is with the person that has Jezebel is that they will unfortunately lie about the spouse that they are abusing. And then they lie to people in the church, they lie to family members to get them to believe those lies. And the people that are married to them are just dumbfounded. They don't know what to make of that. Um, I will share this. You can uh, receive some support if you're looking for that. Uh, I have a 
a group on Facebook that is called the Jezebel um, and then uh, Ahab and Leviathan support group. It's growing every week as people are finally realizing that they're not crazy, that their spouse is, that their spouse is being directed by the spirit of Jezebel, by the spirit of Leviathan. And it's driving them, unfortunately, to divorce court. And uh, oftentimes the person that has the Ahab spirit doesn't want a divorce. They just wants peace. It wants their spouse to be a different person, but they're tired of dealing with it. I've had some people that have gone through, you know, 40, 50 years of going through hell with that, and it's never been fixed. And so at some point, it may be time that you do need to separate and then address this. Address this with a person that understands deliverance from Jezebel and Ahab and Leviathan. If you go to a regular counselor that doesn't understand the spiritual components, then unfortunately, it is kind of a waste of your money because they don't understand the root issue. You cannot uh, take a demon and command it to go by simply counseling and telling them to behave better. That spirit has a right to coexist within them until you take your authority. And if you don't know how to do this, you can always reach out to Restored to Freedom at RestoredToFreedom.com and uh, we can uh, set up a session for you and help you go through that. We also have a uh, monthly worldwide deliverance session that's on Facebook that you can go to. Um, right now we've got them scheduled for every last Sunday night of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. There's people all around the world that watch this, thousands of people at once, and then there's thousands more that watch the recorded versions, and they're getting delivered from Jezebel, Leviathan, Ahab. They're seeing miracles amazing miracles, healings of like uh, cancer and healings from lupus and uh, fibromyalgia, all kinds. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that there is hope in your marriage and uh, we just pray for everyone that you are truly restored to freedom. Thank you.